everyone, welcome to Invictus Porsche. Today, we don't have a Porsche in front of us, but it's a very beautiful looking VW Scirocco, which I'm going to tell you more about. So the VW Scirocco actually dates back to 1974, where it was designed to be a replacement for the Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. The Carmen Ghia is one of the VW's most famous classic cars. It was a two-door coupe based on the air-cooled VW Beetle. So the Scirocco shares the same philosophy as the Carmen Ghia, but it's designed to be a more sportier looking car. So the old Scirocco was replaced by the VW Corrado in 1988, but it was revived back in 2008, where it shared a platform with the VW Golf. The production for this current VW Scirocco ended in 2017, followed shortly after by ending production of the Beetle to make way for VW's new philosophy of small SUVs like the T-Roc. So now we're going to talk about why you should buy a VW Scirocco. In my opinion, it is one of the best looking cars in its class as it looks more like a coupe than it actually does as a hatchback. Another thing which makes a Scirocco stand out is it doesn't follow the same design language as the hatchbacks in VW's lineup did. So for example, if you were to look at the Golf or the Polo, they're pretty undistinguishable unless you know really about cars. And if you were to debadge this completely, only the keen-eyed enthusiasts will be able to tell that it was actually made by Volkswagen. Rocco doesn't only look good, but it does have a lot of performance as well. Even if you don't go for the R, this is the 2.0-litre TFSI, and it still can keep up with many fast hot hatches of its day. Being the 2.0-litre TSI GT model, this has 208 brake horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. Scirocco will do 0-60 in 6.9 seconds and will take you up to a staggering top speed of 149 miles an hour and you can still return an average of 38 to 40 mpg. In my opinion the Scirocco will hold this value a lot better than a Golf or a Polo and you should keep an eye out for the GT and the R models as they should be future classics in the next 5 to 10 years. So this Scirocco is finished in metallic rising blue, it's one of my favourite colours for the Scirocco and it also features from the panoramic glass roof. The Scirocco also has the 18 inch Interlagos turbine alloy wheels and it even has a small little VW tyre cap there as well. They are finished in satin black, not gloss, so they do have a slightly matte kind of look but in the right, line they do, in the right light they do shine really nicely as well. So the Scirocco when it was new was a bit more expensive than the VW Golf but it was a lot more better value for money as it had more standard equipment than the Golf. So now onto the interior which is actually a really nice place to be. It has full Vienna black leather interior, front heated sports comfort seats which on a cold day like today is really nice and it also has electric lumbar support for the front driver and passenger. This Scirocco also has a multifunctional flat bottom steering wheel and it also has folding and heated electric door mirrors. So this car also has the pan roof which really opens up the interior. Being a black interior it can feel a bit small and stuffy but because of the roof all of the nice you get a lot of light and it's just a really nice place to be. It also has a touch screen stereo with bluetooth and aux and it also has a parrot system which has controls down here. And it also has the adaptive chassis control, which is a really rare option in these, so you can choose between comfort and sport for the shock absorbers. This car also has automatic headlights and automatic wipers, making it a very convenient car to drive, so you can focus on the driving without having to worry about small trivial things. This Scirocco also has a brake pad wear indicator, so you know when it's time to change your brake pads, so you don't, you don't risk uh, ruining your brake discs. It also has an auto dimming interior mirror, and it also has ESC electronic stability control, making sure that you don't skid and you are being as safe as possible when you're driving the car. So I mentioned before the stats of this car, so now we're gonna see what it drives like. Can see I'm probably smiling right now and this car just puts a smile on your face for such a small car it sounds beautiful as you will hear from the exhaust videos we just took it's tight when you put it in sport mode and it's just a really nice car to drive enough space for you to get through it's Dacia drivers then they're the next Rover drivers Oh, 
the acceleration is really responsive the gear changes are beautiful and crisp it's got a really nice gearbox the clutch isn't too hard and stiff as well and you do get the best of both worlds where if you want to drive and cruise nicely it's more than enough to more than comfortable to do that put it in sport mode and you get to enjoy the car on a b-road so guys i know this isn't the usual video we do most of the cars that we do review are porsches but if you would like to see more stuff like this please do like comment and subscribe and let us know what cars you want us to feature on the channel and how we can improve thank you very much